I came down to the creek just to get a little bit of time in nature. I'm not far from civilization. Uh, the road is just off to my left. You'll probably hear cars going by in the video. But as I was down here, I saw this land feature that I wanted to point out. Um, I'm currently standing on the side of a natural dike that is deposited from the stream. And this is something that is not well understood by the general public and this can affect how we um, choose to build houses, how we sculpt the land, all kinds of things. So, just kind of showing you the situation where I'm at. All of this gravel area has obviously had the soil stripped away by the stream and it is washed downstream to be deposited elsewhere. We have a current band of willows that are along the very edge of the stream and then we have the stream itself. So the willows are the first um, defense against erosion, but these ones are already in an eroded area, so they're not necessarily protecting this land. Up here, we do have a lot of willows anchoring the soil with their roots, but this feature here, you can see it's kind of hump-shaped. This is where, when the creek has flooded, it rises, and it's carrying all kinds of silt and sediment and rocks. It rises, when it finally reaches this level and it crests over, the water is rushing really fast down the channel. When it crests over, all of a sudden this water drops out and it becomes still. And it just moves slowly. Sediment and rocks drop out and they build up. This dike here, which comes all the way down here, and it follows down, it narrows down, and then it basically ends down in here. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller, or lower in elevation. This is all streamside deposit where the floods have released their sediments as soon as the water slows down by breaching over the edge of the shore. It slows down because all of a sudden it no longer has this more narrow channel. Now it has a much wider area to flow through. So the same amount of water going through a narrow channel is going to flow very quickly that same water, once it reaches a higher level and it spreads out, it just slows down and moves much more slowly. That is what allows the sediments to drop out. Now, if we were to come in here and we were to bulldoze and we wanted to make this level, let's just draw a line across here and say we're going to take this hump and we're just going to flatten it out. Then what that means is next time the stream comes up, there's not a barrier for it to drop over and for it to all of a sudden have slow waters. This creates low areas where pools will gather. The water will stay there much longer, but the water doesn't really travel much. Now, without these naturally occurring dikes, the water will come up. Yes, it will slow down some, but it will not be as slow as if it had these dikes to protect the waters behind it. So now, all the water flowing across the land will flow much more quickly than if that dike had been there to slow it down some. What you can end up with then is internal erosion, new channels. You can see there are some low areas back in here. Some of these areas all of a sudden will funnel the water and you'll see really um, intense erosion occurring back here away from the stream bed. So this is one way that new stream channels are cut when man has gone in and leveled out the land. The water flows much more quickly than it normally would. That fast flowing water will, will uh, drop into the existing channels that are there and then it'll start carrying the soil out of those channels. Before you know it, this entire uh, sediment bed, which is currently um, maybe a, a 100 year floodplain, all of a sudden will be washed away and it will be bare gravel just like all of this down here. So I just thought that I would point this out and give a little nature lesson on how streams actually have the ability to self-manage and what that means and to show you what this looks like to have a streamside dike and how that plays into the immediate environment.